Um, and what I've learned is that I have to help my students reconcile science and faith by addressing their fears and their anxieties first. And I know their fears and anxieties well because I lived them. So I attended a large public university. And when I started in college, I was a Christian. And in one of my first biology classes, the uh, professor told us, you can't believe in God and accept evolution, that evolution proves that there's no God. And I found this really puzzling. And I went to a couple of pastors I knew, and I sought them out and asked them. And they told me the same thing. You have to choose, faith or evolution. And my biology classes were showing that evolution was a reality. And since everybody was telling me how to choose, I made a conscious decision in college to uh, give up my faith, reject all belief in God, and I became an atheist. And it wasn't until a few, couple of years after I got out of college that I came back to Christ. But then I had to spend the next 10 years trying to make sense of the philosophical and theological issues so that I can then reconcile my Christian faith with my acceptance of evolution. And now it's 20-something years later, and I do everything I can to help change this conflict character of evolution and faith. And my parents look at me, why? Why do you do this? This is hard work. And I do it because I care about people's salvation. I don't want students not going into the sciences because they're told that they have to reject evolution or reject mainstream science. I don't want students leaving their faith because they learn about evolution or they learn about other science things. So I care about, care about these kids. Many of them do leave their faith, unfortunately. The Barna Group uh, conducted a poll, you heard about it a few minutes ago, uh, of young adults with a Christian background. And they found this, three out of 10 feel that churches are out of step with the scientific world we live in. A quarter hold the perception that Christianity is anti-science, and just about as many said that they've been turned off by the creation and evolution debate. This is heartbreaking and unnecessary. Okay, pressuring our young people to reject evolution outright leads them into a corner, and they end up with a faith crisis. I just heard about one of these Monday night in my class. It's not even what I'm going to talk about right now. About three weeks ago, I was in uh, Oklahoma speaking at a Christian university, and 50 so students in the room, and one came up to me afterward, and he said, can we talk over coffee? He shared with me that he gave up his faith, that his home church and his parents did not want to engage in conversations about the evidence for evolution. And he felt that the conversations he had with them, were, he, they were closed-minded. And they were, he felt it was dishonest and almost deceptive. And because of that, he gave up his faith. We can do better than this. We need to do better than this. We need to have honest, intellectual, and transparent conversations and engagement with the scientific findings. We owe this to our youth.